From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone, I'm Wes Talon, and from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Thanks for joining me. Our nation and our county have been through a lot since September 2008 when the recession began. Thankfully, the worst seems to be behind us. There also seems to be some trepidation about the future. Dr. Tom Cunningham is the chief economist with the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce and in that role focuses on designing policies and making recommendations for solving economic problems that the chamber and other regional entities can together address. He advises the chamber staff and members on economic topics, trends and analysis. He knows what he's talking about because he spent 30 years with the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta as an economist has been a college professor and holds multiple degrees, including a PhD in economics from Columbia. He recently spoke to the Douglas County Chamber and agreed to join me in the studio for a chat about Douglas County's economy. Dr. Cunningham, thank you for coming in. It's my pleasure. Is the worst over? Yes. Or That's do it. we have good days ahead of us, steady days ahead of us, aggressive, happy, jumping up and down days ahead of us? We're not in the happy jumping up and down time, okay. but I think things are pretty solid. Um, the metro region is going to see a year that is more or less like last year, but that probably implies that Douglas County in particular um, will do relatively well, that you know more and more activity uh, is coming into the metro area. Douglas County is clearly part of that metro area and is starting to pick up some speed as the kind of center core starts to expand out and that's where we're at. You said during your talk, and I've got some notes I want to refer to here, uh, one of the, the terms you used that I really like was solid going forward yes. and you said that. There was a question that said, uh, you know, that you answered and said, you know, Douglas County is becoming more and more part of the metro Atlanta area. Explain yes. that. Um, well, it's kind of self-explanatory in the sense that this area is integrating into uh, the metro area. The uh, kind of standard metropolitan definition is 29 counties. Douglas is is in actually the core of the metro Atlanta. the 10 county area in the, core yeah, area. Um, and, you know, while I understand that the recession was relatively hard here, I think, you know, all of the sort of outside the perimeter, immediate outside the perimeter um, areas that were dependent on construction uh, going into the recession suffered, but that's over. Uh, now it's a matter of seeing um, all kinds of businesses uh, move out here. We've obviously seen some, some data centers move here. Um, it's a relatively good place to, to put things like logistics, data centers, technology. Um, there's no reason to think that, that that's going to uh, diminish in the coming year. You said that before the recession, I had that as another note, construction and home building was the, local lar the largest local industry basically yeah. here on that because we are a suburban community. Yeah. And hard manufacturing at all was mainly centered in Atlanta proper. More or less. Or more or less on that thing. Um, and that industry, that local home building industry was devastated yes. here by the recession. Yeah. And as a result, in part, uh, our foreclosures were huge mm -hmm. in Douglas County. And now we're at 0.07%, so that's still a little higher than Georgia and the nation. It doesn't seem that out of control right. now on that thing. I think that's fair. If our, our foreclosures, there seems to be a lot of bank activity, banks buying foreclosures. Is that good for the economy? It's not necessarily bad. Okay. I, I, you know, I can't speak to the motives of the banks themselves but the market is clearing in a fairly reasonable fashion. 
uh, property values here have stabilized. Yes. Um, and, you know, in terms of looking forward as we see industry and consequently people moving into the area, um, uh, forward-looking investors might, might seriously consider the, the area here. Well, you were talking about industries and all moving into the area. Uh, we have the Google effect mm -hmm. that we have the huge Google data center yeah. that, that located in the eastern part of our county and then has is now almost completing a major expansion. Right. That brought in PricewaterhouseCooper and, and it builds yeah. out like, yeah. like that. Uh, do we, does the Atlanta area is it known for this kind of uh, development? Is it known for to be a technology yes. uh, data area center um, type thing? Would more, I mean, do they look in, into, uh, I know you have Silicon ba Valley in California and things like that, but for data centers, things like that, is Atlanta known for this? Um, yes, that we have a, a fairly strong tech industry, uh, certainly. If you look at what's happened over the last, well, last year in particular, what you've seen are some kind of old line companies like, like GE um, that have decided to put their digital innovation hubs here in Atlanta. Um, that's an ongoing process. And, you know, NCR moved inside the perimeter um, to be with the, the kind of tech hub associated with sort of Georgia Tech and the, the North Avenue corridor, uh, the support for that is obviously not something that can happen there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is, I, I think the, the Google and PwC uh, moves bode well for the future here, that this is a good place to put this stuff. You have to support it, it, it doesn't have to be local, but it helps, um, and this is local. Is Georgia Tech one of the driving factors? Yeah, yes. That uh, Georgia Tech has a very large engineering school. Georgia Tech has more engineers enrolled than Berkeley and Stanford combined. Uh, so, yeah, we are producing a, a lot of engineers, and that is quite critical. Uh, and the, the tech engineering program, supported by uh, engineering at, at Kennesaw and now UGA. Um, yeah, we are we are a very serious place for uh, for innovation. Unemployment right at the present time in the state of Georgia, or the latest data figures that are available, is at five percent in the state mm -hmm. of Georgia, four point six percent nationwide, five point one percent here in Douglas County. I'm very happy about that rate because the five point we used to be a whole lot higher yes. than the, yeah. the state and the nation on yeah. that. You mentioned in, in your talk to the chamber, you used the word um, or the term, if I, if I call it correctly, as almost basic full employment at mm -hmm. close to those figures yeah. on, on that. So can we expect to see a drop in that? Or do um, you think that's the new normal? I, I think we're at the new normal, but you want to be really careful with thinking about local unemployment rates, particularly in something like Douglas County, where the geography is not all that large and the ability to move in and out on a commuting basis is certainly possible. So you know, you, it's very difficult to assign too much uh, weight to very local unemployment numbers. A lot of this stuff um, is contaminated in some sense by, by a number of things. You've got a large number of people that are um, living here in, as a suburb of Atlanta and working in Atlanta. And commuting. And commuting back and forth. Um, you have a lot of uh, issues with kind of marginally attached uh, people. That's a term uh, used in labor economics that describes people that are not currently looking for work because they're discouraged, the so-called discouraged workers. Um, Do you in came part to off, the recession, yeah, in you, the recession. You had, and, a, you had a really bad recession, yeah, and, and it's gonna take a while for uh, the people. just gave people, up, some people just gave and, up. And to bring them back in, it may take a while. Although, as you start to see more and more jobs become available, that process is uh, likely to unwind fairly fast. But, 
but all that would serve to kind of dampen the movement in the unemployment rate. That you have people that really aren't counted as unemployed to come in and take jobs. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's it's kind of tough to to make too much out of local unemployment rates, particularly when they're not wildly out of line with uh, the rest of the state. Yeah, like I was saying, Georgia is five percent, and yeah. we're at one point five point one percent. So where we have been traditionally thinking of Douglas County as a singular entity in economics, perhaps we should be thinking it more in regional terms? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think, you know, just the stuff we have been discussing over the last few minutes shows that. Um, and really not just um, regionally, but globally as well that you know, the, the PwC and, and the Google data centers are not something that's confined to the Atlanta area and really are going to serve um, the larger community. Yeah, the global market. But, yeah, um, and that's something that's going to continue. A lot of your firms are, are uh, you know, if anything, multinational. Um, so that's, that's just something that, that uh, is going to become more and more common as, as time goes by. One of the statements that you made that um, really surprised me during your talk was that Atlanta's economy is bigger than that of Ireland's. Mm -hmm. That's astounding to me. I mean, of course, a lot of that you know, depends on, on exchange rate valuations and all that, but by yeah, and large, that, it's by about, and large, yeah, by and large, it's, it's, in um, layman's it's, terms, it's Ireland, yeah, I but that's, you know, we are a very large economy, and I think that those of us that live here, particularly if you've been here for a while, you don't fully appreciate the fact that, you know, we're adding, at the moment, around 70,000 or more jobs um, a year, and that means in the uh, Atlanta region. In the Atlanta region, and that means that uh, you're getting more than that in population in migration. Um, you know, we're we're growing, and if you grow over a long enough period of time, you get big. You, and, you get you get yeah. big, and and the Atlanta metro area is big. Right. We were loosely the same size as Birmingham in 1960, um, and you know that comparison wouldn't come to mind now. No. Um, but, but it's true. Uh, and that's because we have, for a very long period of time, uh, grown faster than, well, than the nation. And that's why we're big now. Is there a reason for that? We're a good place to do business. We're actually a fairly nice place to live. Um, both living in and uh, working here are, are uh, pretty attractive. Mm -hmm. One of the kind of interesting things that I've seen over the last year that I've been at the chamber is talking to um, in-migrant executives, that is executives that have come in recently from other parts of the country, who are completely unaware of the diverse nature of living conditions here. That, you know, if you want to be, you know, in an urban high-rise, you can do that in Midtown or Downtown. If you want to be you know, in the suburbs, uh, you can come out here. If you want to be in a horse farm, you can go a little bit further out. Um, and, and still and be that, within commuting and, and, distance. Right, and, and that by and large, that message is not well understood by the rest of the world. One of the things we're doing at the Chamber is promoting Atlanta, just the simple facts on the ground. That, that there are a, you know, any number of different styles of, of living you can, you can choose here. Uh, it's not particularly expensive. It's um, a large metro area, so it has all the amenities that go with that. And life overall is pretty good. And then you combine that with a business um, environment that's relatively low tax, um, low, well, and, and that's true on the, on the personal side too. Um, yeah, it, it, it makes an, an awful lot of sense to move here. And we have four seasons in one week. Well, that's <laughs> true, too. It, uh, it depends on, I personally don't have a problem with that, although. Um, well, we had that just recently, right. too, on that. You were talking about the in-migrant executives and, 
and how many people are moving here and I assume people are also moving out of here mm -hmm. and going other places. I've seen a difference in, um, and it's a generational thing, I think, mm -hmm. that there used to be, you used to think in terms of careers, and now you think, m more, younger people think more in terms of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see that? I th think that that's a commonly held belief. I think that the nature of careers is changing. That, you know, I, I, I'll use my son as an example because he lives around here. Okay. Um, he is on a very nice career path. Um, he's doing programming. Um, and. I would not be surprised if he stayed with the firm that he is at for a long, long time. On the other hand, if he moved, he, he really wouldn't be doing something wildly different. That the, the career path is, is um, not necessarily with an individual firm forever, although it could be. Um, it's more in a subject field. Right. As, and yeah. so therefore, for advancement, it would be more of transitioning. It, it may be. And that, that, that that's not a, a huge problem anymore. Although, you know, if you look at the issue of, of mobility um, in kind of the old version of, of, you know, you're staying with the, the company forever, if you're mm -hmm. moving up, you're moving around. And people may not want to do that, that they may, you know, choose to uh, live here. And if, if, you know, their career in their existing company takes them to a different place, they may choose to stay here and uh, you know, advance their career at a different firm. You said during your talk that consumption is seventy percent mm -hmm. of the economy. Yep, that was a, uh, that astounded me in being a very high number. Yeah. Now I know we are uh, we are a nation. We are a an economy that spends. Mm -hmm. So if 70% of our income um, is going out, and I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those believers that every dollar you spend turns over at least three times to, you know, for right. goods and services and rent and for the people you go, and then it turns over another three times and does things like that. So there's definitely a, uh, a continuing roll of mm -hmm. the money that you spend. But you said that during the recession, everybody just kind of pulled back in yeah. on that. Uh, because why? They were afraid of uh, their future income streams, I believe. And so the issue is a lot of people had run up relatively high debts. We were concerned housing is an obvious place where uh, mm -hmm. an awful lot of debt was accumulated relatively rapidly. Um, certainly credit card debt was, was up to consumer debt of, of various forms, but um, people worked that off. That as, as you said, you know, the foreclosure crisis per se is largely over now. Um, you know, those, those issues have largely stabilized. Yeah, and people's people balance. People down their debt, basically. Well, yeah, During the, the recession. basically the people got their balance sheets in order. Um, you know, through whatever means, that there were a large and disappointingly large number of bankruptcies, to be sure. Um, but overall, right now, when you look at consumers, um, you know, their debt service to income ratios are, are very attractive. Um, that's what they actually have to pay on the debt. Um, and, you know, their, their balance sheets look pretty solid. Well, I know personally, during the recession, I was doing that. Yeah. I didn't realize it was hurting the economy. I knew that it was improving my bottom line mm -hmm. because I was going, okay, I need to pay off. I need to, you know, bring down, you know, some of that debt. And, of course, we were all taught there's good debt and bad debt. Right. And I was concentrating on the bad debt, you know, getting that, yeah. getting that w under control and yeah. where it needed to be and things like that. So that actually hurt the economy. Right. There's a large element of self-fulfilling expectations in recessions. 
that if everybody is concerned about a recession, even if their concerns are completely unfounded, and everybody cuts back in consumption based on that fear, you're going to have a downturn um, because spending is, gets reduced. Um, so yeah, there's expectations play a, a critical role in, in uh, economic performance. And then people grew more confident in the economy or in their futures and, and for, started spending. And for good reason, that their balance sheets really did get better. That you know they looked at their balance sheets and you know their their debt service uh, burden was was lower than it was going into the recession, and so yeah, with good reason, people became more confident. And they started buying cars and houses and yeah, just consumable yeah. goods Although, and doing uh, things they like didn't, that. In general, they didn't go nuts. I mean, that was part of the reason why. Um, why we why had the, the problem in the first why place. The well, and why the recovery was as um, lackluster as it was. That, you know, as, as people looked around and started uh, buying more stuff, they didn't go crazy. Um, and so, Not you know, particularly the, the big ticket items right, and the, things the like that. Right, the idea that we had this surge in consumption that typically accompanies uh, the end of deep recessions just didn't happen this time. Um, People, you know, were concerned about their balance sheet and, and uh, kept it under control. I and, and I think that bodes very well for the future for us, that it puts us on, you know, a solid, if unexciting, uh, expansion path. I think people are being more careful. Okay. I know why. I, 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 okay, I'm that's being, fair. I, you know, I think they're being more careful. There's so much uncertainty right now. Yes. Uh, we're just going into 2017. Uh, we have a new president. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a uh, GOP-controlled Congress. Uh, they're making all sorts of, of claims of things of what they are planning on doing. Uh, from what they have said without becoming political here, uh, do you think that we economically uh, we are on a good path with the new people in Washington? Um, I don't know. That's why there is such concern and uncertainty that you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, you know, we will know a lot more uh, in a few months. Right now, the one thing that does look like it's most likely to, to happen is, is infrastructure investment. Um, which will be a positive for the U.S. I mean, we haven't maintained our infrastructure, existing infrastructure, uh, nearly as well as we probably should, and it looks like that has bipartisan support. Um, that's certainly a positive. But beyond that, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. And the uncertainty isn't very helpful for um, the economy. Any kind of uncertainty is, is not not a good thing. Um, but we'll. We'll see what happens. This will get resolved. Um, Fairly quickly? Well, I hope so. We'll see. And then that should put confidence in or take confidence out. Yes. Your best advice for our viewers? Um, you know, relax. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know what to say. That, that right now is a period of, of kind of serious uncertainty, and that is likely to get resolved one way or the other um, in a relatively short period of time. Okay. So we'll just, we'll have to see what happens. So this is why it's fun being an economist, because, uh, you know, stuff happens. Stuff and, happens. And then, then you got to worry about it. But for the short term, you want, uh, since we are a consumer-driven economy, go out and buy stuff? Yeah, we're not. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think, honestly, what we're seeing is consumption growth that is about in line with income growth. Um, and that speaks to the caution that you were talking about, that yeah, people are, are going out and buying more stuff, um, but they're doing it at a pace consistent with the rate at which their income's growing. And that's sustainable over forever. Forever. Um, and and that, their balance sheets are looking right. better, so therefore they're more confident in their abilities uh, to uh, purchase. Well, and they can, uh, you know, take small small hits with uh, greater ease than they, than than they, they could, could otherwise. Have. So yeah, I mean, I think 
aside from sort of the obvious huge uncertainties associated with the, the new administration, um, in a fundamental sense, we're on a pretty solid, if unexciting, growth path. And that's uh, pretty healthy. That's pretty healthy, and we'll right. end it on that positive note. Okay. Dr. Cunningham, thank you very much for it's being here. It's my pleasure. Me. And that's what's happening at 8700. I'm Wes Talon. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Thank you.